Hey guys, and welcome to Gaming Daily. Now, of course, this is the series on the channel where I keep you guys up to date with everything going on in the world of gaming. Now, some of the top stories to date, 343 have just announced Halo's roadmap for free seasonal events. Battlefield 2042's day one patch may have already been implemented. And the community are not very happy with Battlefield, and it's one of the worst rated games on Steam right now. Don't go there, guys. We've got a lot to talk about in today's show. Let's get into it. Jumping into the first story of today is, of course, coming from Halo themselves on Twitter. And this is the tweet that goes on to say that essentially, the events with free content are an integral part of Halo Infinite's multiplayer seasons. And with our 20th anniversary event wrapping up on Monday, November the 22nd, we wanted to look ahead at what's to come. Draw your blades for Fracture, Temrai, arriving next week. And that's just for starters. And of course, on screen right now, you guys can see the Season 1 Heroes of Reach fracture event and of course the free 30 tier event that you can unlock during this time again the samurai guy that we've seen in the trailer a couple of months ago is in this as well it looks so so sick and again this is completely free if you guys have halo infinite and you've uh, downloaded the game this will automatically be added to your account no charge included you don't have to buy the battle pass you literally can just play this when it comes out so yeah really really exciting with that and also alongside this there is also a roadmap which shows you all of the different events coming until season one does finally end now of course we've got fracture the temrai which is of course the one that's coming next week we then have the hcs spotlight as well winter contingency cyber showdown and tactical ops and these are the different multiplayer events that are coming very very soon as well leading up to the end of season one so again really really interesting really really cool i'm glad that they are adding all of this information in as well and i'm really really happy that they're keeping the content flowing and again it's always really nice to see also going on to our second story of today halo tweeted yesterday that they're actually showcasing a part of the campaign of halo infinite and also discussing halo in general the multiplayer and of course the campaign now of course this is on their twitch and their youtube channels as well so make sure you go onto their twitter or even their obviously socials twitch and youtube at 10 a.m pt or 6 p.m gmt if you are in the uk as well and again if you wanted to see what the times were just again calculate that into your own time zone but yeah if you guys want to see a bit of a peek at the campaign this is your chance to do it and 343 is showing this on their social the next story i wanted to go into today was actually from tom henderson and this was tweeted out earlier on today around halo infinite now this goes into detail around forge and also co-op campaign as well and when we're likely to see that coming to the game now of course it goes into detail and says the halo infinite's forge is looking like it will release in august at the earliest according to their roadmap season one will last around six months until may season two will last three months until august unless there's another delay season three will introduce forge so again we're likely to look again around august time which is a real long time without having forge and again in the comments down below there was one around a question asked tom around co-op campaign and he just mentions season two halo in general in the franchise has always been a game that you play with friends and also play collectively and enjoy and explore these different worlds and atmospheres that 343 and bungie have created in the past not having that at launch is a bummer but again, if it means that we're going to perfect it and make it as good as it can be when it comes out, I'm happy with the delay. Although, waiting till May to be able to play the campaign with friends, I don't know, man, it could cause a bit of a stir in the community. And some people may not like that. A lot of solo exploration is going to need to take place from December until May time. So again, there's a long time of just individuals exploring the world, which could be good for east egg hunting and exploring and things along those lines but anyway yeah we're gonna go a long time without forge and cop campaign unfortunately but if it means they're gonna be perfected then i don't really mind the delay now moving on to our next story which is around battlefield 2042 and yeah the day one patch may have already went live so going on to tweet by tom henderson here he says that uh, it would appear that today was the day one patch ouch <laughs> The original dates may have been on NZ time zones, New Zealand time zone. Over the next 30 days, we're presently scheduled to release two further updates per the EA.com blog on Battlefield 2042. Now that statement there was officially from DICE or EA from their website, so we're going to go and have a look at the picture right now quickly and just show exactly what they say. In the coming weeks, we'll have to share more around further upcoming fixes, balances, changes and quality of life enhancements. Over the next 30 days, we're presently scheduled to release two further updates, with our next update delivering more fixes and improvements that we've identified during this first week of early access and a large and more sustainable update following after that so again the update that we had yesterday which was the 0.2.1 probably was the day one patch that we were all expecting which again is 
I don't know, man. It hasn't really done a lot. I mean, yeah, it's fixed a couple of things in Hazard Zone. It's fixed a couple of things in general. But, again, there's still issues with people not being able to sprint in game. Or there's been occasions where I'm playing the game and I can't crouch. I can't fire my gun. I can't aim in. I, I don't know, man. Even the matchmaking in Battlefield Portal, that's bugged as well. There's a lot of things wrong with this game at the moment. Only two modes in all our warfare. Portal being populated with XP lobbies and zombies lobbies, which don't work. The XP in Portal being broken. Hazard Zone just being repetitive. I don't know, man. The game isn't looking too hot. And again, following on from this tweet, there was another tweet as well to go into from Tom Henderson, which was also, I don't know, interesting to bring up as well. I'm not 100% confident that it was day one, but judging from EA's official posts, it says there's two more to come in the next 30 days, which lines up with these dates well, and the patch 0.2.1 went live in a couple of hours before the game became available in New Zealand. So yeah, as Tom mentioned, this, the, the dates that we obviously heard about with the day one patch could have been New Zealand times when the game was officially first released, but... Yeah, again, let me know, guys, what you think about this. I don't know, man. I'm a bit, uh, I'm a little bit bummed about that. Now, the last story to go into today is around the ratings of Battlefield 2042. Now, it's important to note that gaming journalists and like IGN, for example, have not given this game an amazing score. They have said that All Out Warfare, they didn't enjoy it, that Hazard Zone and Portal were a lot of fun. But yeah, overall, they've given it a good score, like rather than an awesome score that Battlefield 1 had. They've given Battlefield 2042 a good score, which again, it, it is what it is in that scenario. But going on to this tweet here, it says, Battlefield 2042 is currently the sixth worst rated game on Steam right now at 21%. It's the second worst rated game this year behind eFootball 2022 on Steam. Ouch. <laughs> oh, Ooh, that did hurt. That really did hurt. Look, they've, they've had it coming to them. This game is unacceptable. I don't know how this is not being talked about enough. Like, I get it. There's a lot of content creators out there that are playing this game that are EA partners or friends of EA that are trying to stick up for the game and only mention its good points. I have not played this game once and had a good time throughout. I have, I'm not going to lie. I've, I've enjoy, I enjoy the game. I think Battlefield is a great game and it's, it's core. But do I think this game is perfect in any way, shape or form? No. Do I think it's good at its core? Of course. I think the game has a lot of potential, but it needs to be executed in different ways and a lot more content needs to be added to this game. But anyway, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you have enjoyed today's uh, gaming daily. If you have, let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to be doing this again daily as much as I can. And yeah, it'll be a lot of fun to uh, to make this a really cool series on the channel as well. But guys, hope you have enjoyed today's video. Drop a like if you have. And let me know down below what you think of the stories we've covered today. And if, if you think there's any other games or anything we want to cover in the future, let me know in the comments down below. And again, I'll look into them, do some research on them too, and make sure they're added to the, uh, the show in the future. But guys, have a good rest of your day. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.